For, you know, in the last couple of weeks, we've been endorsed by Jeb Bush, by Mitt Romney, by Carly Fiorina, by Mike Lee, and by Mark Levin. Now, you want to talk about the full range of the Republican spectrum, the ideological spectrum, the full range of all of us who come together. We are uniting together behind a strong, proven conservative who will fight every day to bring back jobs and economic growth, to wa raise wages, to stand with the hardworking taxpayers against the corruption of Washington. Senator, you said that you like and respect Donald Trump in the past. Is it getting harder to respect him? Would you still support him if he were the nominee? You know, I have to say, seeing him go deeper and deeper to the gutter, it's not easy to tick me off. I don't get angry often. But you mess with my wife, you mess with my kids, that'll do it every time. Donald, you're a sniveling coward and leave Heidi the hell alone. So will you support him as the nominee? I'm going to beat him for the nomination. He is not... Senator, I am answering the question. Donald Trump will not be the nominee. He's leading right now. You Donald Trump will not be the nominee. Will you support him as the nominee? Donald Trump will not be the nominee. The reason why Republicans are coming together and united is because Donald Trump is a train wreck. And he hands the election to Hillary Clinton. Donald Trump is a gift wrapped in a pink little bow for the Democratic Party. It hands the general election to Hillary Clinton. How does and, Wisconsin... And that... Go ahead. No, I was going to say, how does Wisconsin factor into that scenario? Wisconsin is pivotal. Wisconsin is a battleground. The entire country right now is focused on the state of Wisconsin. And here in Wisconsin, the polling shows that Donald Trump and I are tied. We are neck and neck. It is a dead heat. And the people of Wisconsin have the opportunity to speak, not just for the state of Wisconsin, but for the entire country. All of America is looking to and listening to Wisconsin. This state has a megaphone and a platform. And I am so encouraged because here in Wisconsin we are seeing Republicans come together and say this loud, angry, cursing, bullying voice is not the voice of America. This is not who we are. You know, for seven years under Barack Obama, we've seen a president who tears us apart, who divides us on racial lines, on ethnic lines, on socioeconomic lines, on religious lines. I believe America is hungry for a leader in the spirit of Ronald Reagan who brings us together, who unifies us, who reminds us who we are as Americans. America has been a light unto the world, a shining city on the hill. And we need a president who appeals to our better angels. The heart of my campaign is focused on three issues, jobs, freedom, and security. Not one of those issues is a narrow 51% wedge issue. Those issues don't tear us apart. Those issues unify us. They're 60, 70, 80% issues. They cut across party lines. We bring together Republicans and independents and libertarians and even Democrats who are fed up with the failures of the Obama-Clinton economy. When it comes to jobs and economic growth and wages, everyone wants to see manufacturing jobs coming back to America. Everyone wants to see wages coming up again. Everyone wants to see it possible for people like my dad, a struggling immigrant with $100 in his underwear, washing dishes, making 50 cents an hour to achieve the American dream. That is the promise of America. And this is an election about bringing back that promise, that economic growth, Right now, the majority of Americans believe the American dream is unattainable. It's slipped out of our fingers. But it doesn't have to be this way. We simply have to remember who we are and what the principles are that built America into the greatest country in the history of the world. Senator, Senator, Senator you are Wisconsin. advocating for uh, patrolling Muslim neighborhoods. How does that comport with your vision of the American dream, sir? And also, who would actually perform those, uh, who would actually do that test? Well, when I talked about issues that bring us together, one of those is security. 
Two days ago, we saw the tragic terrorist attack in Brussels. All of us, our thoughts and prayers are with the families of those who were murdered, of those who were wounded, including at least four Americans, Mormon missionaries, that were among those wounded in that attack. What that attack remind us was that it was not an isolated incident. It was not a lone wolf. It was instead part of a global jihad. Radical Islamic terrorism has declared war on America. ISIS has declared jihad on America. They have stated their intention to murder as many Europeans as possible, to murder as many Israelis as possible, and to murder as many Americans as possible. And in the wake of every one of these terror attacks, whether it was Paris, whether it was San Bernardino, or whether it was Brussels, we've come to see a pattern of our current leadership. President Obama and Hillary Clinton and the modern Democratic Party is so captive to political correctness that after every attack, the president gives a, a national TV address and refuses to utter the words radical Islamic terrorism, refuses to acknowledge the threat we're facing, and indeed, typically after these attacks, the president jumps up on his high horse and lectures America on Islamophobia. Enough is enough. The people of Wisconsin are fed up. The people of America are fed up. We need a president. We need a commander in chief whose number one priority is keeping America safe. As president, I will defeat radical Islamic terrorism and I will utterly and completely destroy ISIS. But, sir, Senator, how does, you, you how does patrolling these Muslim neighborhoods, how does that accomplish that goal? I mean, aren't you dividing a religion, sir? Not, not remotely. It is proactive law enforcement. It is using the tools that work. You know, in New York City, there was a successful program that was implemented under Mayor Michael Bloomberg, where the police and law enforcement worked cooperatively with the Muslim community to prevent radicalization and to stop acts of radical Islamic terrorism before the jihadists took the lives of innocent Americans. When Mayor Bill de Blasio, a far left-wing Democrat, came into office, one of the first things he did in a fit of political correctness is canceled the program. That was a mistake. It was a sign of a left-wing Democratic politician unwilling to do what is needed to keep us safe. And I would note, these are standard law enforcement tools. If, if you're focused on gang violence, naturally what you do to deal with gang violence is you direct law enforcement resources to communities that are plagued by gang violence. You work proactively and cooperatively with the community and you get the gang members off the streets. That is common sense effective law enforcement. Well, you do the same thing with radical Islamic terrorism and we can see the mistakes of Europe. This attack in Brussels is in many ways the fruits of decades of failed immigration policies in Europe where they have allowed vast numbers of radical Islamic terrorists to invade Europe. And their communities have become isolated and set apart. And as these communities are isolated and set apart, they fester radical Islamic terrorism. They fester Islamism. Now, it's important to remember, Islamism is different from Islam. Islam is a religion. Islamism is a political and theocratic philosophy that commands its adherents to wage jihad, to murder or to forcibly convert any infidels by which they define to be any of the rest of us, and to forcibly impose Sharia law on all of us. Islamism is a profound threat to America, to freedom, to our lives and security. Islamism is a political and religious philosophy that has set out as his objective the murder of as many Americans as possible. We need a president who doesn't plunge his head in the sand like an ostrich and refuse to acknowledge this threat exists. You know, one manifestation.